Are we ready? And Board of Education meeting teaching and learning <clears throat> Tuesday, August 14th at 6.33 p.m. Uh, uh, President is myself, Christine Ressler, Evelyn Gleason, and Dr. Williams. Uh, communications or old business, just class size review. So, as promised since our last committee meeting, I've done another analysis of class size. What you have on the first page um, is kind of our three year trend of the number of sections that are over the window. So right now we are sitting in the middle, you want to look in the middle box, August 2018, 16% of our sections at Bremen are over, 10 at Tinley, 17 at Hillcrest, and 6 at Oak Forest. And I'll go, I have a couple of hot spots, so when we get into the individual buildings, I'll tell you what those are at this point. So this is still the pre-10 day drop. So this includes kids that may be on our rosters but haven't registered yet. Mm. And so that's why they could be contributing to um, numbers over the window. On the back side is our three-year comparison of classes under the window and the percentage within the window. And we really want a, the sweet spot within the window that's telling us we're being financially responsible and academically sound. So when we're running a higher number of classes under the window, um, that's not necessarily being fiscally resp responsible, but in some cases that we can't avoid it because they could be single sections. You know, it's a matter of do we drop an AP Physics class of 10 and then those kids can't take the class, or do we run it? Okay, but we're really trying to shoot for around 60% of the sections to be within the window or higher. We're pretty much on track with where we have been for the last uh, two years in August. So if we want to go ahead and flip to the next page and look at Bremen High School in particular. So you want to look to the right of the first dark line. Here are the number of sections over the window. And so, Christine, I think this is the first time you've seen this particular report. report. When you're looking in the column that's the plus window, so if I look at fine arts, I've got one section that's over, and it's over by one student. So when you see a plus one equals one, that's how many sections are over by that many students. So my two hotspots at, at Bremen, um, if you remember the last time when we met, I was concerned about Honor Spanish 2 and Spanish 2 those numbers still haven't been resolved. So right now we're sitting at a plus nine in Honor Spanish two and a plus four. So what you're seeing on paper under world language is um, two sections that are greater than plus four, that's those two sections. Um, I'm waiting for a proposal from Bremen to add a section and actually do a push some of those regular Spanish twos into Honor Spanish mm -hmm. two, so we have a class of 13. Mm -hmm. And that way that'll be balanced. Um, so we hope to resolve that shortly. The other hotspot at Bremen is um, studies of English. We only have two sections, and both sections are over by plus five. In that case, I don't know, one of the things they're looking at in both situations is, one, have all the kids registered? Are we expected to get them all? Usually in the honors level, we don't get much mobility, but we just want to make sure the kids are all accounted for, so I may end up adding a section there as well. Other than that, we're sitting um, pretty what good. studies in English? Is that like regular? That's the freshman honors class. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a minute to look through those if you have any other questions or concerns about something that you see. Moving on to Tinley. Tinley, most of their classes across the board are only over by one or two students. There's one exception in IT, and it's just a matter of balancing. It's the two-hour auto technology course. Um, and the district class, which runs first period and second period, is the one that's overloaded. We just have to make sure that we don't have Tinley students in there mm. tipping that scale. They actually have their own section, third and fourth period. So it's just a matter of balancing those two out. The rest of them look pretty good. Okay. There's no questions there. Moving on to Hillcrest. Hillcrest, right now, um, while there, there are several sections that are over 
by some significant numbers. Um, they still have some balancing and movement to do that they're not completely done with that. So I'm not overly anxious at this point. Um, but I'm going to watch uh, business classes like, for example, digital literacy is a plus eight. But we've got two sections that are under the window. It's just, mm. just a matter. The other thing mm. we look for, too, is did we put in upperclassmen that, the, that need the technology credit? And can we proficiency test them and get them exempt from digital literacy? So those are a couple of things we look at. Um, otherwise, again, outside of just balancing a few sections, we should be pretty good. And some of it's a matter of... I think we talked about last time where when we build the master schedule we keep the rei students separate from the gen ed students initially and then we mesh them together and i'm not sure if they've duplicated some of those students which is then contributing to them being over the window so i, I fully expect those to correct themselves and oak forest when we met in july had quite a few sections <coughs> over the window but they were in the midst of balancing um, and now they are well within the plus one, plus two. The only exception is world language, and I forgot what class that is. Let me take a quick look. Of a plus five, and that's Heritage Spanish one, and it's the only section we have at a plus five. Everything else looks good at Oak Forest. Questions, comments, reflections? So at this point, pretty good. I'll let you know if I end up adding those two sections <coughs> at Bremen. I likely probably will. Definitely the Spanish. I'm not sure about the English at this point. But I'll, I will keep you posted on those. Because remember, you approved um, four unnamed sections right. at the last board meeting. Right. So. And that would come out of those yes. unnamed ones? Okay. Yep. And that way we can just get staff right in place yeah. and not yeah. wait till the September board meeting. Okay. Next item on the agenda new, under new business is our Memorandum of Understanding with South Suburban College. That is up for board approval Tuesday night. Hopefully you, you don't disapprove it because uh, <laughs> we're kind of moving along. Um, but it's more just to make sure that everyone understands kind of their roles and responsibilities on each one. So I'm just going to highlight, um, it's already gone through Hauser's office. He's completely fine with the language. Um, it ended up going back through a couple revisions because one of the things that wasn't in the first round of MOU is the technology piece, mm -hmm. and so I'll explain those two components. Um, so I'm going to highlight some of the main things. On the first page under number two, the space provided, um, South Suburban is donating four spaces to us absolutely free. That's four traditional classrooms in addition to two office spaces, which is amazing, and I can't wait for you guys to see it. It's really coming along nicely. Um, under supplies... <laughs> Naturally, we would supply all of our curriculum assessment tools, books, in addition to the technology. So in the corner behind you, in those white carts, those are actually our new Chromebook carts that are going to make their way over to the campus. Um, so the students will be using Chromebooks to do all their courses. Okay. We have two full sets. Those are two full sets of 30. And then we have another cart coming in tomorrow of 15 that will be for the Achieve Room. So every room will have a set of Chromebooks to work with. Okay, So that's um, something that's in there. And the other thing under supplies that we're going to be working towards is building some dual credit opportunities. So anything that is um, dual credit, meaning the kids get college credit and high school credit at the same time, that all has to get approved by South Suburban's um, education department because they're the ones that have to vet the, that cur their cur our curriculum matches what they're teaching at the college level. Right. And we are looking to do that and pilot it second semester with Microsoft Office. As far as rent goes under number four, it's just stating that um, our, the facilities are not charging us any rents or fees. Under utilities, so this is a new addition from the first MOU, is we wanted to make sure that everyone was clear, you know, they're going to provide your basic utilities, but we are not actually going to be on their internet, sir, uh, internet um, line. They have actually set up a separate wireless connection for us mm -hmm. that our Chromebooks will plug into. Um, and mainly that provides us, without us doing that, we wouldn't have the capability of locking down and, and putting filters on the internet mm -hmm. because the college does not have to filter their content. And so we want to make sure that our students are still you know, in a safe environment and because they are working on, on the computers that we have the ability to lock that down. And so we are on our own wireless network. As far as security goes, at this point, um, we are of the mindset we're not going to be adding additional security. Um, we talked through um, the presentation I made to the board, I think it was back in April, 
Um, South Suburban has their own full-time cop that's there. There's one during the day and one during the night. The Sheriff's Department is also housed at South Suburban College and they have several programs there. So there's a lot of <coughs> police presence. We feel that's gonna be enough to you know, hopefully hold our students in check. But in the event that we ended up having to, to need uh, security on the second floor, then that's something that we would negotiate with them. Um, we have full access to, our, to their facilities. Um, we have the insurance piece covered. Um, on the next page, I wanna highlight number 10. So one of the things that's a nice advantage to moving our ultimate program over to the campus is our students are going to be able to participate in college events. And so you'll see that under fall and spring events. The college is going to um, make us aware through promotional materials um, when they have their open houses, their nursing program. Our kids, we actually just talked about um, setting up a special um, time for our students, our Delta students, to participate in the Manufacturing Day. We actually had um, students from all four campuses last year do that, and so we want to make sure we have a bus of Delta kids participating um, in that. And so they have access to all the musical events, um, recitals, their STEM symposium, and any conferences, so we want to make sure that we connect our kids with those college experiences. And then lastly, I just want to point out under number 12 that this MOU will continue to renew itself on a yearly basis unless one or both parties see fit to terminate. But we're hoping that we will continue our partnership. Um, it's been great so far. Just in the past two weeks being over there, we're moved in. Still a work in progress. Um, it's not going to be perfect next week, Tuesday, but um, we will have functional classrooms. Um, but we'll talk about uh, in the Achieve Room, which is the special ed program, that room is actually getting outfitted with brand new furniture. So there's temporary furniture in there right now, but we're moving to some flexible seating and kind of making it more like a college atmosphere with high tops and low furniture and booths out in the hallway if kids need a break and you know they're done sitting in the classroom, they can go work in, in the hallway and they have internet access. So um, at some point, Probably late in the first semester, I want to have um, a teaching and learning committee meeting over there so you can actually see once it's all decorated. And, you know, we just literally got access to the classrooms last week, Tuesday. So it's wow. been because they had to vacate all of their equipment and furniture and relocate it. And, and so that's why we just got in. So it's a work in progress, but we're really excited about it. Any questions about the MOU? Okay. Now, how does the student? When we transport them over there, or they are solved. It's finally solved. We have yes. transportation. Here's what we're doing. So again, remember, it's only for the day students. Correct. The night students, they're on their own to get themselves there. But we've worked it out with the Illinois Bus Company because the kids are going from nine to two. It actually works out perfectly that we can double dip on bus routes already in existence. So depending upon how many students are in a given in er given area, it'll be one of two things. They'll either get picked up on a corner, if there's a lot of students in the area, or they'll actually get picked up in front of their house and dropped off either at the corner or in front of the house, depending upon the, the population. Most likely we'll need two buses. One will cover either the north side, south side, or one will cover the east and the west. However, it works out in terms of the number of students, but we are good to go. Kids are getting to and from south side. And when they get there, it's just one building. Yep. Right. So they just walk right upstairs. Go to. We actually have a wing. Or anything. We have four yeah. classrooms and a wing, and that's where they'll be. Okay. So we're moving. Yeah. Good right. question. Okay. All right. So we're going to bring this to the board next week for approval. Yeah. It's really exciting. Yeah. It's kind of a reality. Like now that we're moved in, it's like okay, we can't turn back. <laughs> no turning back. No, and I have to say, um, Aaron Collins, our Alted director, um, and. Some of our teachers in the program have been calling all of the parents. We've sent out not only um, that flyer, but we sent out an initial letter saying, your student's been recommended, here's a little bit about the program. They've touched base with every single family that's in the day school. We've only had one refusal to come. And for the first time, the families are actually excited about school, right. which is amazing. So good. Now we hope the kids are. But I think once we get them there and they see their op the opportunities, I think it's going to be really good. Mm -hmm. So we're excited. Yeah. All right. Now they're <clears throat> they're hoping that our kids will attend South Suburban. And that's the yes, absolutely. That's why we're really excited about this partnership. So one of the things, once the kids get settled, Renee Mack and I are going to go out probably after Labor Day and meet with all of the students and really talk about the careers. Remember the presentation mm -hmm. I gave of all the different right. career pathways. Really dive deep into that. 
We want to show them the labs that are there, the manufacturing lab, the maker's lab, the Cisco lab, so they start to see some of the college equipment. But we also want to talk about OCS 121, which is the overview of college success. That class is already on the books. Mm -hmm. it's, it's actually the college class, and so we need a minimum of eight. We're going to shoot for more, but we need eight students who are ready for that challenge. They're actually going to start a college class in October. Wow, that's great. And then our goal is in the spring semester, we have a part-time business teacher um, that's traveling between Bremen and Oak Forest and the way his schedule works out, he'll be free towards the end of the day and that's where we want him to come over to South Sub, do the Microsoft Office class so the students will get dual credit because mm -hmm. he's a certified business teacher. So not only will they get the high school credit for the career elective, but remember Microsoft Office is one of, those, one of those courses that's on multiple career pathways. So now they've already completed one class in their certification. Right. right. And that's more of what we want to do is try, try to come up with those situations. Now, they may not be able to get all the classes in their certification, but we want to at least get them started so they have to okay. But yes, that is the goal, is to get more. As far as getting started. Yes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's our goal. <coughs> Lastly, I wanted to end with, um, I usually do this right around this time. Um, our advanced placement results are out, so I'm going to highlight where we are. Um, we had some really great successes this year, um, and I'm going to put this then in the mid-month memo for the rest of the board to see. So the first thing I want to show you, this is our trend data going all the way back to 2008. So this is school year 2007-2008. And back at that time, so we've got three columns here. These are the total number of exams taken by our students. These are the total number of testers. Now, that doesn't mean these are the only students enrolled in the class. Our enrollment in AP is actually much higher, but not all of the students actually take the test in those areas for whatever reason. Either they don't feel prepared, it's not their comfort area. One of the things we've worked really hard is to make sure that finance, finance is not a reason they don't test. We wrote into the Title I grant last year that all low-income kids basically only had to pay $15 per test. doesn't matter how many tests they took, they only had to pay the $15. So we wanted to make sure that that wasn't an obstacle. So that's why you're seeing this nice upswing. We've really not only um, encouraged more students, we've broken down the barriers of what it takes for a student to get into an AP class. Back when, even I, when I was a science supervisor or a science teacher, students basically had to give their right arm to get into an AP class. They had to do a portfolio. They had to get permission. They had to have a certain grade. And we're like, no. If a student really wants to take an AP class, let them challenge themselves to take an AP class. And so that's why you're seeing the number of testers on the rise, and that's why you're seeing the number of exams on the rise. Um, I want to skip to the next slide and then I'm going to put this, these two data sets side by side so you can see the comparison. This is our pass rate. In 2008 it was 45 percent, in the spring it was 45 percent. Mm -hmm. We've kind of had this surge along the way, um, but I feel like we're starting to get into a nice level, kind of consistent pass rate, if you will. Um, if we can creep up to the 60%, that's, that's really good. So let me put these two data points side by side because it's... Before you do, yeah. the number of, of AP tests or classes, was it different in 2008 versus 2018? That's a great question because, yes, over time we have added classes. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say since 2008, the total number would be six, I believe. I'd have to go back and verify that. But you're right, there are more classes available now than there were in 2008. Great question. So let me put those data sets side by side because it's really interesting. So back in 2008, we only had about 300 students actually test, and their pass rate was 45%. Mm. This year we had almost 900 students test, and our pass rate is 45%. It's pretty darn good. Yeah. Mm. We're giving more students exposure, and our pass rate was the same when we only right. tested the best students. Right. So pretty Let me go through some district highlights here. So collectively, as a group, with, let me, don't talk, don't look at it's like just yet. In these three areas, so this is English, English literature, this is taken by our seniors. As a district, we surpass the state and national average. So all of our students collectively, the highest you can get on the test is a five, and our average was a 2.6. We beat the state and national average in Calc BC. This is for our very top end math students. Again, these are seniors. Um, most of our kids get fours and fives. 
in Calc BC. And then Physics 2, these kids can be anywhere from a junior or a senior, and we beat the state and national average in Physics 2. Psychology, we actually beat the national average, so our average score is a, is a 3, just over a 3. Um, knocking on the door of being the state average. So that is us collectively as a district. But I want to highlight, break it down by buildings. We have some really great stuff going on at our building levels. So at Brennan, I'm just going to show you the last five. The, the chart on the right is actually produced by the college board. So the buildings themselves can track their trend history and they do it in a five year period. So the blue bar represents Brennan's pass rate. And you're going to see with the exception of 2014, their pass rate is on the rise, okay. coinciding with the number of testers. They had 162 testers with a pass rate of 36. This year they had 213 with a pass rate of 47, mm. which is really nice. So let's look at some specifics. So their pass rate has increased over the last four years from 36 to 47. 86 percent of the students passed calculus AB. This was their highest average in the last four years. The uh, last five years, I'm sorry. Their average is a 3.86. This is huge. I don't believe we've ever had <coughs> this performance out of Bremen in Calc AB. In chemistry, students earn their highest average over the last four years with a 2.43. Chemistry is probably the most difficult AP exam there is. So this is very cool. 50% <laughs> of our kids pass the psychology exam with 10 perfect fives. Uh -huh. That does not happen at Bremen. Um, and, and this is the highest number. The course was first offered in 2013, so this is the highest number of fives they've had and the highest uh, pass rate. And lastly, Spanish language saw a 34% increase in students testing over the previous year. 96% of the students passed the test, and their highest average, 3.74, was the, last, uh, the highest in the last five years, and they beat the national average. Wow. Now, what's really cool about this is these students, a lot of them are native speakers, but they're going through the Heritage program. So they came in either at Heritage Spanish 1 or went right into Heritage 2. Then they were taking um, AP language junior year, and now they're taking AP, I'm sorry, they were taking their honors four and then taking the language. Many of these students will go on and take literature this year, which is really hard. So that's Bremen, really good stuff there. Tinley Park, um, you're going to see the number of testers dipping at Tinley and Oak Forest, and most likely, this is a direct correlation, their enrollment is actually decreasing. Oak, when I get to Oak Forest, they've actually um, dropped 200 students over the last, I think it's three or four years, if I remember correctly. So we think that's contributing to the number of testers. Don't know definitively that's something that the APs and the buildings need to dig into a little bit. Um, but their pass rate is on the rise. They're at 63% this year with 215 testers and some of their accomplishments this year. Um, so their overall pass rate has increased 4% over the last year, um, even though they went down 19 students. Again, we don't know if they're losing the best students or somewhere in the middle, um, something you need to look at. Almost 60% of the students passed the biology, biology exam and TP, um, there's their average, actually beat the state and national average in biology. We had a first time AP biology teacher this year in that class. 85% of the students pass the chemistry exam. Wow. Um, and they beat the state and national average by almost a full point. Who's the AP chem teacher? Lee Brzezinski. That one's huge. 81% of the students pass the English language. That's the junior level test. Um, they also beat the state and national average. And 80% of the students pass physics too. And again, they beat the state and national average. And then lastly, Oak Forest, or sorry, Hillcrest, then Oak Forest. Um, we're seeing a, a slight increase. Remember, Hillcrest is still building an AP program, so they don't necessarily have the same number of AP students that the other buildings do, but we're continuing to work at that and adding more and more students. And this is not reflective of the number of kids in AP, just who actually took the test. Um, and their pass rate actually went up 2% over the last year. Are these kids actually in the building at Hillcrest? Because I know they used to have to travel a lot. Yeah, most of them are. I can't say definitively, um, but for example, this past year the AP Chem students had to travel. Next year the kids are traveling to Hillcrest. They actually had more students needing AP Chem, so kids are coming to them for the first time, which is cool. Their highlights, I mentioned um, 
Three, 13%, they actually had a 13% increase in the number of test takers, tests taken, not the number of testers, but tests taken. Their pass rate has increased 2% over the last year. 50% of the kids passed the psychology exam and they increased their average score over the last three years. They were 1.44 in 2016, they're at 2.35 this year. So we're chipping away at that. 100% of the students passed the drawing portfolio. This is the first time, kind of district-wide, that we had 100% 100 of the kids pass the drawing portfolio. Um, I'm really proud of this. Um, this is actually their highest average in the last five years with a 3.0. And I, I attribute it to, and I talked to Jenny Reed about this, they did a lot of front work to get to this point. They held an AP symposium, so all the kids from across the district got together. They had an opportunity to see each other's work, critique each other's work on the rubric, the AP rubric. They actually got critique from a different teacher than just their own. They also participated, remember the IHSA art competition? Mm -hmm. They had that experience before they did their final submission, and I believe all of that collectively had an impact on the results. We actually had a perfect five out of Tinley, oh, which was great. Uh, I'm just saying, no, oh, the okay. perfect five actually came out of Tinley, but they had 100% of their kids pass, first time. And they had their highest average in US history in the last four years. 1.41 so we're chipping away um, our goal that I've been talking about with the supervisors is we need to get the AP teachers together because usually there's only one in a building but get them collectively together as a team across the district and share best practices of what's working to find again while we're not about the number we also have to remember our families are paying really good money for these kids to take the assessment so we have to make sure we're doing everything like we can to prepare those kids and not just what we feel we want to teach you know, there's a time and a place for both, but we also make sure, want to make sure that they're prepared. Now lastly, Oak Forest. So here's what I was talking about. You're seeing a, a significant decrease in the number of testers. Again, probably directly correlated to their enrollment going down. And I see kind of collectively their pass rate has been pretty consistent around, you know, if we say about 55% is pretty much what they do on a yearly basis. Um, so let's look at their highlights. Their pass rate increased 2% over the last year. 87% of the students passed calculus AB. They had the highest average, being the state and the nation. They actually had a new AP calculus teacher last year, um, so that was good to see. 50% of the students passed computer science. Um, I believe this is the first time they've had that high of a percentage, um, and that's their highest average in the last five years. 72% of the students passed English literature. Remember, this is the senior exam, and they had the highest average over the state and the nation. 81%, this one's amazing, 81% of the students passed psychology with 38 perfect fives. That's actually not their record. 2016, they had 54 perfect fives. Wow. But this is their highest uh, number of fives in the last three years. So that's pretty cool. And beating the state and national average. And 100% of the students passed the drawing portfolio, which is really cool. Uh, last thing I just want to leave you with is AP scholars and just kind of revisiting what this means. So I, I put the designation across the top. It's hard to, we could be talking about the same kids because I could have earned this by the time I'm a sophomore. So what this is, is if I averaged a three or higher on three or more exams, I'm considered an AP scholar. So freshman year, I can take geography. Sophomore year, I can take um, physics and either world history or, or European history. So if I take those three and get a three or better, I'm already an AP scholar as a sophomore. So every AP exam I add on could move me to another designation, but it's also dependent upon their performance. Mm -hmm. So here you have to have an average score of 3.25 on four or more exams, 3.5 on five or more exams, and a 4.0 on eight or more exams. And so um, across the district, we have three national AP scholars. That's Pretty significant. That's really hard to do. But we have 28 that are AP scholars with distinction, 17 with honors, and 96 with just AP scholars. So again, I could have started out here, and I could be in this bar, but I could be over here next year. You know, so I'm represented in different areas. So I'm really proud of the work that our teachers, our students are doing in this area. And again, just trying to provide more opportunities, and now getting down into sharing best practices. I think we'll keep that number going. Yeah. Questions? The, um, the score, the passing score is accepted 
at most colleges, or do they have to? In the state of Illinois, because they passed that law that they have to accept them, once they go out of the state of Illinois, it's going to be dependent upon the university. Okay. Yeah. But we're always of the mindset to the exposure. So the research behind it says even if a student is in a class, they have a greater chance of being successful in college, and that percentage goes up if they take the test, and that percentage goes up again if they take and pass the assessment. They have a greater probability of being successful in college. So. That's where our mindset is. Exposure is better than non-exposure. Mm -hmm. you know. If they pass it, that's real money. Cost yes. Money. Yes. Any other questions? Any other item you want to discuss before we close out? Whenever you want to adjourn, sir. We we'll adjourn the meeting at seven four. I usually